Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I welcome you all uh, to the 17th lecture of uh, the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So this is the first lecture of module 6 uh, and overall it is 17th lecture. So the module uh, 6 uh, is about beyond stress and recovery. Uh, so till now we have been discussing about uh, the ideas of stress, health and coping strategies. So all the lectures till now are focused on uh, these ideas about stress and how it influences health both physical mental health and and how can we cope with the stress now from the module 6 we will be talking uh, about the concepts which are beyond just recovery and uh, not dealing with stress and uh, problems but uh, the concept which are about flourishing in life about positive mental health about the concepts of well-being uh, so <coughs> and thriving in life so, uh, so the shift, will, uh, the, so the, the uh, from this module onwards, uh, the focus and the ideas uh, will be a little bit different from just uh, about the ideas of stress and coping with the stress. So, the today's lecture uh, is titled as you know positive mental health and well-being. So, we'll talk about uh, this idea of positive mental health and well-being. So, before we talk about today's lecture, uh, let us have a brief recap of the last lecture that is uh, lecture 16th. So, in the last lecture uh, we talked about you know as a coping strategy we have discussed the last strategy uh, which is coping with uh, meditation and mindfulness. So, the idea was you know uh, we have discussed how can we cope using uh, the method of or techniques of meditation and mindfulness. So, we have discussed that meditation is about you know uh, achieving a state of thoughtless awareness or mental silence uh, which gives us a break from constant worrying and random and non-stop thought processes uh, in our mind and this state of you know thoughtless awareness which is very peaceful and relaxing uh, and which leads to various positive outcomes can we achieve by using two main approaches of meditation techniques. So, there are diverse meditation techniques, but all these techniques can be uh, divided into two broad categories. One is you know, concentrative meditation and another is mindfulness. So, in the concentrative meditation techniques, uh, mostly they focus on one particular uh, stimuli uh, such as sound or could be an image or could be a sensation in the body. So, you exclude all the thoughts and focus only on one thing to achieve uh, the mental silence. In mindfulness is just kind of opposite to concentrative meditations where you are not focusing on one thing rather than you are opening up and becoming more you know you expand your consciousness and uh, just witness or neutrally observe whatever is appearing in the space of consciousness. It could be thought, emotions, sensations, sounds from the environment whatever it is. So, you do not so there you create a gap between thought processes, emotions and yourself. So, they do not directly impact you. So, you have more degree of freedom. Uh, so, this is how it uh, you know leads to various positive outcomes. Uh, so, uh, we have discussed about in details about all this uh, you know uh, the uh, aspects of uh, meditation and mindfulness. And uh, we have also discussed you know various therapeutic or healing effects of mindfulness and meditation techniques. Uh, specifically, the various research shows the beneficial effects of mindfulness in terms of stress reduction, you know, in terms of decreasing anxiety, depression, negative emotions, uh, you know, positive impact on relationships, 
uh, improving well-being, uh, physical health, immune functions. So many research have been done on the in this direction, and most of the research uh, indicates the positive impact of mindfulness and meditation techniques on the various you know uh, mental and physical health aspects and well-being. Then we have also tried to understand you know uh, the mechanisms by which you know mindfulness brings about all these positive changes. And the meta mechanism that we have discussed was is called as you know reperceiving, which basically means uh, by mindfulness we shift our perspective and you know our perception uh, in 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 such a way that we decide disidentify uh, from the thought stream and emotion stream of emotions and thoughts and sensation. Uh, so and this disidentification uh, creates many positive impact, which further leads to you know better. Emotion regulation, self-regulation, creates flexibility in your uh, no, mind and behavior. Uh, it leads to more value clarifications. Uh, so these are some of the further mechanisms that are responsible for, you know, bringing about various positive changes. You know, uh, by using meditation and mindfulness techniques. So we have discussed all these things in details, and we have also given an instruction for mindfulness practice also in the last class. So, uh, today we'll uh, talk about the concept of positive mental health and well-being. So, we'll discuss some major concepts such as the concept of mental health and well-being, two views of well-being, uh, hedonic well-being, eudynamic well-being, and we'll discuss you know one particular um, model of uh, positive mental health proposed by Keys. Let's start. So, the idea of before we understand the idea of you know uh, mental health or well-being, it is important to understand the concept of health. So, in that context, you know uh, one of the most celebrated definition of health is proposed by WHO, uh, which defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of diseases or infirmity. So they uh, proposed a holistic, uh, you know, definition of health, which uh, you know defines health not just in terms of absence of disease. So generally, we think you know if somebody is not having any disease, uh, he is healthy. But in a holistic sense, just absence of disease does not make you healthy person. But you know, health is a state of well-being. You know, not well-being, not just physically, mentally, socially. So, in all dimensions, you have a state of well-being. Uh, that kinds of defines, you know, health in a holistic sense. So, we can understand, you know, uh, that health is a multi-dimensional concept, and it is not just about physical health. And a mental health is clearly an important aspect of this definition of health. So, we cannot discuss health. In whatever ways, in physical health or other health, without discussing the concept of mental health. So, mental health is a very important part of the concept of health. So, WHO further uh, defined specifically uh, mental health as a state of well-being in which the individual uh, realizes his or her own abilities, realizes his or her, you know, realizes his or her own abilities can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work producti product productively and fruitfully, and is able to make contribution to his or her community. So, the, some of the important dimensions of mental health they have all uh, you know is given in this definition of WHO, which states that you know uh, mental health is a state of well-being. So, you experience a sense of well-being in terms of where you realize your own abilities. So, a mentally healthy person will realize his or her own potential and try to work towards actualizing those potential and abilities, use those abilities. Uh, a healthy, mentally healthy person will cope with the normal stresses of life, he is able to deal with the normal stresses of life. Uh, obviously, you know in exceptional situation and traumas, obviously everybody is overwhelmed, but in normal day to day functioning, normal stresses of life, he is uh, he or she is able to uh, cope with them. Uh, they can also work productively and fruitfully. Uh, 
even at the face of you know various stress and you know challenges in life and they are able to make contribution to his or her community so they are also productively contributing to their societies in whatever ways it could be in a very small ways or maybe uh, you know uh, big ways whatever it is so this is uh, uh, one of the important uh, definition given by who about the mental health uh, so it talks about you know realizing your own potential and working towards that having proper coping abilities with the problems of life or stresses of the life working productively fruitfully and making contribution to the society so these are important indicators of mental health according to this definition so this definition clearly indicates that mental health is more than just again absence of mental illnesses so just like you no know, the definition of health the definition of mental health also uh, includes the idea that it is not just absence of diseases that makes you mentally healthy you know so it's a state of well being with the idea that you know there are uh, you know diverse you uh, know uh, functionings and experiences in your life you know that makes you makes or increases your sense of well being productivity functioning experiences of life so in a true sense uh, it is the state of well being beyond just mental illnesses so in the positive sense uh, mental health is the foundation for well being so when you talk about the concept of well being uh, it is in a true sense so mental health or the positive mental health is the foundation for well being or many times the idea of positive mental health and well being are synonymously used and uh, it is for effective functioning for an individual and for community so it is very important in terms of your functioning abilities in life so mental health talks about all these aspects so the this definition of mental health also suggests that you know the mental uh, or health and who definitions of health and mental health uh, clearly suggest that you know mental physical and social functionings are interdependent so physical you know mental physical and social functionings are interdependent so they are all correlated to each other so you cannot have proper physical health without mental health you cannot have proper you know social health social functionings without uh, proper mental health so these are all interconnected to each other so the, so you cannot be you know uh, isolatedly just work on uh, you know physical health and you you cannot functions in other dimensions of life so these are all important connected uh, if you want to look at health and mental health in the holistic sense or uh, despite the importance of mental health so much importance that it is one of the foundational aspect of our health without which we cannot properly function we cannot have proper physical and social health uh, there is a general uh, sense of lack of awareness and uh, still people consider you know mental health as a kind of luxury where not much focus is given uh, uh, primarily because you know people think it is not as important as let's say physical health or other aspects of health uh, but we have clearly understood from this definition it is one of the foundational aspect of health without which we will not be able to have other aspects of health so uh, mental health is often used synonymously with uh, mental health conditions or illnesses such as depression anxiety etc however the concept is uh, more than that uh in the broader sense if a person is not having mental illnesses does not necessarily mean uh, that they are experiencing positive mental health or flourishing uh, therefore it is a complex concept uh, where we need to understand the diverse aspects of it so generally when we were to talk about mental health people generally think that you know uh, the person is uh, talking about mental illnesses so mental illnesses are kind of synonymously uh, they became synonymous with the idea of mental health uh, so there is an obviously the mental illness is one of the aspect of mental health because if you have mental illnesses you cannot have mental health uh, but the concept is not just about illnesses but concept also includes positive mental health with the idea that it is also a state of well being where no you also functions in a various various positive dimensions of your life or you know your functionings also increases it also talks about your positive experiences and functionings so uh mental health includes two major aspects one is obviously mental illnesses that we need to look at and second is positive mental health or well being 
So, uh, we will not be able to talk about uh, mental illnesses in this particular course, because it is not the focus of this course. Uh, uh, because, you know, mental illness itself, you know, will require a lot of, uh, uh, you know, explanations and clarifications, which we do not have, uh, you know, we have not focused in this particular course. So, we will focus on the positive mental health, which is also includes the idea of well-being. Uh, we will look into that. We will try to understand mental health from the perspective of well-being. Uh, uh, so, well-being is concerned primarily with the promotion of positive mental health experiences. So, if you just, uh, if I draw it here. So, if you talk about mental health. we should understand that it has two important aspects to it. One is about you know understanding mental illnesses some people call it mental health conditions and another important is obviously positive mental health or well being. So, uh, we will focus on positive mental health and well being part uh, in the remaining uh, lectures, the very various aspects of it, we will talk about it. So, let us see what is the meaning of well being. We have tried to understand little bit of it, let us see in more detail what is the meaning of well being. So, well being uh, refers to in a general sense optimal functioning and experience. So, the state of well being if you are experiencing a state of well being the idea is you are experiencing. So, your experience of life is good. So, at the experiences level you have you know uh, you have you know, positive experiences in life. So, there is an optimal experiences of the life situations around you in terms of experience such as emotions, you know, feelings, etcetera. S and there is an optimal functioning level. So, you are also properly uh, able to function in the, in, the, in the life situations around you. So, your functioning is at the optimum level at the same time uh, you are also your experiences of life is also good. So, both emotional aspect as well as functioning aspects uh, are included in the concept of well being. So, the idea of well being is about your experiential state as well as your functioning state. Uh, the Royal Society in the UK uh, 2004 they defined well being as you know positive and sustainable mental state that allows individuals, groups, and nations to thrive and flourish. So, it is also another uh, way of people have been have defined well being in so many ways. So, this is another definition uh, which says you know well-being is a positive and sustainable mental state. So, obviously, whenever we talk about well-being, it is a positive state. So, that is why we call it positive mental health also in that sense. So, positive sense. So, in your experience, you are experiencing positive you know, emotional state, positive functioning states. So, it is a positive and sustainable mental state. So, that is it is not very superficial and you know, uh, transitory, but it is more enduring state which helps individuals, groups, nations to thrive and flourish, to which helps or promotes uh, no, uh, individuals, societies, groups, nations to flourish or expand or grow, grow. So, it promotes you know growth and expansion and the flourishing uh, of life. Uh, so, uh, well being uh, is as a concept can be you know used for individuals individual level. So, individual well being we can talk about, we can talk about societal well being, we can talk about national well being, we can talk about global well being. So, all the, the various levels we can talk about. Uh, so, in fact, you know some countries have started measuring uh, their national well being index or happiness index. So, these are all reflections of 
at the broader level they are trying to see you know collectively how people are you know functioning and experiencing their life uh, so it can be uh, used in diverse uh, you know units in terms of individuals groups nations or at the global level so this means at the in, uh, at the level of an individual well being refers to psychological physical and social states that are distinctively positive so that is the core idea of well being so when we talk about well being we are talking about enriching human life enhancing human functioning so enriching life is more about experiencing life in terms of emotional experience and enhancing our functioning so if if our aim is to promote well being we are the idea is uh, we need to enrich human life in terms of their experiences and we need to enhance their functioning levels uh, whatever in whatever domains so these are the core ideas of the concept of well being now well being uh, as i have already said you know uh, uh, people have been trying to you know define well being from the diverse perspective there people have there are so many definitions of well being so well being has been defined in diverse ways uh, however most of these definitions fall under four distinct categories so if you see a lot of this definition uh, the orient of focus of their definition uh, may change and uh, and the most of this definition will vary according to this four you know uh, categories uh, some uh, definition focuses on the orientations so first one is about orientation so orientation means what people or what person seeks in their life and why they seek those things in terms of their ideals values goals etc so some uh, people try to define well being in terms of the values motivations goals uh, all these things in terms of what are the, what is the orientation in their life uh, some definition also focus on the behaviors of the people uh, which actually you know uh, focuses on the actual activities that people do and whether it is leading to the whether these are kind of conducive for well being or not so activities such as you know whether somebody is you know having pleasant experiences you know in various activities such as attending parties or some people are writing down their goals to achieve it so what are the actual activities they are doing uh, and whether it is facilitating well being or not some definition may focus on behaviors actual behaviors that people are engaged in uh some uh, definition may focus on experiences of the people uh, in terms of emotions or subjective feelings uh, which may be positive emotions or negative emotions you know so well being is typically associated with more experience of positive emotions and uh, the fourth category is you know functionings so well being can also be looked at from the perspective of functionings of people Uh, how well a person is doing in life in terms of you know abilities accomplishment health habits etc so what are their level of functionings so the better functionings is basically associated with more well being so in all these categories of well being you know uh, uh, researchers have focused on different contents of well being actual content of what is the content of well being no? so based on this contents for example you know under the category of experiences content may include positive emotions negative emotions or life satisfaction so based on the contents of the definitions of well being or categories different categories of well being uh, we can divide well being into two broad philosophical tradition uh, which is called as hedonia and eudaimonia or hedonic well being or eudaimonic well being so these are the two terms that came from the philosophical traditions where they tried to understand human well being and happiness from the perspective of two broad philosophical understandings so all the contents of definition whatever well being whatever ways well being have been defined they all can be categorized under either hedonic well being or eudaimonic well being so let us see what is this two philosophical traditions so hedonism is a is a is a basically you know school of thought or philosophy uh, from which we are talking about you know trying to understand well being from that perspective so in the hedonism hedonic perspective or hedonic well being the we, the idea of well being is about 
you know, getting more pleasures and happiness in life. So more emotional experiences of life is given more importance in the hedonic tradition. So you try to get more and more pleasures and positive emotions in your life and try to avoid more pain uh, in your life. So hedonism is more about you know, getting pleasures and you know, happiness in your life and mostly it is associated with your emotional experiences. Uh, in eudaimonic uh, concept or eudaimonism uh, uh, traditional or uh, tra from the definitions which defines you well-being from that perspective of eudaimonism uh, they define well-being uh, as more than happiness or just emotional experiences so well-being is not just looked as how you feel whether you are happy or not uh, whether you are having positive emotions or not in the eudaimonic tradition it is considered more than just this kind of you know momentary emotional experiences well-being is more about actualization of human potentials it is about fulfilling one's true nature or diamond so well-being is conceptualized in more broader term in terms of more in terms of functioning aspect rather than just emotional experiences about whether you are able to realize and actualize your potentials uh, you are able to fulfill your true values and you know, and inner nature. So all these broader concepts are included under eudaimonism. So fundamentally, their orientations are very different. So uh, hedonic content may include you know the concept of pleasure, enjoyment, satisfaction, comfort, painlessness, etc. Uh, eudaimonic contents may include you know meaning in life what values you have you know in a broader context of your life what are the values and meaning in your life uh, whether you are working towards personal growth are you also working towards self realization self actualization are you maturing in your life you know working towards excellence ethics quality autonomy integration all these broader you know uh, concepts are are discussed under eudaimonic well-being or well-being is conceptualized from those perspectives so hedonism is also associated with certain mindset you know such as you know so hedonic well-being uh, primarily focus on the self on the other hand eudaimonic well-being uh, has a certain other mindset such as uh, it balances the focus on self and others so it is not just focus on just self it also focuses on the others Whereas eudaimonic well-being is more focused about your own experiences and self, self orientation. Hedonism is more focused on the present moment experiences, whereas eudaimonism is, you know, uh, it balances focusing on present as well as future. So it is not just about you know uh, thinking about in the present what you are doing, but in the future level how in terms of goals and. And the motivations and to reach those goals. So those aspects are also included in it. Uh, hedonism is more, uh, you know, in terms of tangible concept like you know getting happiness from a particular thing. So it is more tangible in that sense. Whereas eudaimonic well-being is guided by more abstract and big picture concept. So you may have values and meanings in life, goals in life, so which may be more abstract thing. Uh, which may not be very easy to pinpoint most of the time in your life. Uh, uh, hedonic well-being focuses on taking and consuming what 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 one needs and wants, whereas you know uh, eudaimonism focuses on cultivating and building what one values and envisions. So it is more about cultivation of your values and you know various potentials that you have. So so fundamentally, they are very different in their in terms of orientations, in terms of concepts that are used to define well-being. So if I just draw uh, now very briefly, you can show it like this. So well-being, all the ideas of well-being can be categorized into two broad traditions or two categories. One is hedonic.
another is u dynamic hedonic is more about you know pleasures happiness etc pleasure happiness enjoyment satisfaction uh, these are the concept emotions these are the ideas you know that are basically you know uh, used to understand hedonic well being hedonic well being is more about uh, personal growth meaning and purpose in life actualization of potential etc so many concepts we have discussed so uh, in the literature of psychology hed hedonic well being is called as basically you know subjective well being so subjective well being is a term that is used uh, to basically understand hedonic concepts of well being however uh, eudaimonic eudaimonic well being in in the literature of psychology is typically you know uh, defined or defined by using the term psychological well being so whenever you use the term psychological well being in the psychological literature it is typically eudaimonic well being we are talking about when we use the term subjective well being uh, we are to typically talking about hedonic well being uh, uh, these are technical terms that are used in the literature of psychology to understand both these traditions of uh, well being research so let us see some of the historical roots of uh, hedonism and eudaimonism how they came about uh, so uh, typically you know uh, Uh, this came from the philosophical traditions so this debate between uh, hedonism and eudaimonism uh, has a long history uh, in the 4th century bc the debate was prominent between greek philosophers particularly between aristotle and aristippus so they were uh, at that time you know uh, in the 4th century bc this debate was there in the philosophical tradition particularly between aristotle and aristippus uh, because one was in the uh, favor of eudaimonic well being in terms of how to define a good life and another was one uh, uh, defining well being or good life from the perspective of hedonism so aristotle was basically the proponent of uh, you know eudaimonism and suggested that a good life should be in accordance with your true nature virtue or reason so he said a good life or life which we can say call as you know having well being is should be in accordance with our true nature virtues and reason so the life should be virtuous and it should be led according to our true nature and reason so these are all ideas related to uh, eudaimonic well being in fact this the term eudaimonism was basically came from the aristotle so whereas aristippus on the other hand was the proponent of hedonic hedonism or hedonic well being and said that pleasures is the only good in life and pain only evil the goal of life should be to gain maximum pleasure in life so this is a typically hedonic idea so this debate uh, uh, was kind of there at the background in various philosophical tradition Uh, since then many philosophers took side of either of these tradition some people associated themselves with eudaimonic well being some philosophers associated themselves with the hedonic well being 
uh, for example, Hobbes, Bentham, uh, these are the philosophers who took the side of hedonism uh, later, while other philosophers such as Plato, Kant, uh, they took the side of eudonomic well-being. So, similarly, you know, this traditions of debate was going on and uh, more recently we see it entered in the uh, literature of psychology, uh, where uh, we are looking at well-being from these two traditions. There can be some biological roots of uh, hedonism and eudonomism, uh, where we can explain you know at the biological level how both well-being can be connected to our biology. So, for example, you know research generally shows that you know pleasure seeking or hedonia, hedonic is mostly about your emotions and seeking pleasure uh, is uh, governed by hot systems of the brain which is basically controlled by our older subcortical part of the brain. So, there, is, there are two parts in our brain, one is obviously cortical part that is outer layer which is more recently added to our brain and subcortical part is something uh, uh, the part that we kind of you know common with our animal animals also. So, and cortical part is a recent addition to our brain and because of this cortical, uh, corti cortical development of cortical uh, or cerebral cortex, we are able to think, we, we are able to decide, rational and logical thought processes have uh, evolved in human, in human life. So, this uh, hedonic well-being is primarily governed by those older subcortical part of the brain, uh, while more reflective process which is more connected to eudynamic well-being, how you think about your future, your goals. Uh, your decision makings which are more connected to eudynamic concept of well-being is re more related to cold systems or newer complex cerebral part of the brain. So, if you just you know uh, the see brain obviously, I will not be able to draw it uh, very beautifully, but if you just look at human brain structure. So, let us consider this is our brain. So, this outer layer so this is our cerebral cortex and subcortical part are basically below the cortex we have many structures you know. Uh, many like you know. So, there are many structures like this, which are just below the cortex, they are called as subcortical structures. Uh, which include structures such as you know uh, pituitary gland, limbic structure which are responsible for our emotional experiences. So, all these are uh, basically you know uh, those structures are more relate, uh, more associated with or you know or hedonic concepts of well being or emotions or more pleasure oriented experiences. Whereas, our cortex or outer layer which is more recently added to a human brain. Uh, is uh, more related to eudynamic concept or reflective processes in our in our thought processes. So, many researchers obviously uh, suggest or they are having the view that you know people uh, need both hedonic as well as eudynamic well being to flourish in their life. So, each has their own uh, benefits and own importance and own orientations, but uh, you know both are important for our you know for a flourishing life both plays very important role. So, we cannot neglect one and say other is better obviously, one can be better in a certain context, but the presence of both kinds of well being are important in our life uh, uh, specifically if you want to look at well being from the holistic perspective. So, hedonia and eudonomia are not just opposites or mutually exclusive category they are not 
opposites or mutually exclusive you know uh, because you know uh, sometimes your hedonic well being may promote eudaimonic well being or may not so if your emotional experiences or experiences of life is good probably you will function better you will you will have much uh, more focused and motivation for achieving goals in life so all this one can promote also uh, so one person may derive a hedonic benefit but a eudaimonic loss in same activities so some person may also it is possible you know too much of pleasure oriented life may create an obstacle for achieving eudaimonic well being in terms of meaning and purpose in terms of achieving goals in your life okay and vice versa can also happen so all these are possible so it is therefore important to assess both hedonic and eudaimonic well being variables in our life to study well being outcomes so both are important we need to look at both not just they are not mutually exclusive category but they may complement each other also uh, so if we can uh, kind of show it like this uh, so let's say this is your hedonic well being and this is your eudaimonic well being so these are kind of mutually inclusive category not just exclusive you know so it could be like hedonic both the presence of both actually increases our overall the level of well being so let us a uh, little bit uh, elaborate on the idea of hedonic well being from the psychological literature and subjective well being till now we are primarily looking from you know uh, philosophical traditions so psychologists have uh, adopted the hedonic view and tested uh, or tried to focus on a broad conception of hedonism so in the psychological liter literature when we talk about hedonic well being we are not just talking about pleasures and you know uh, uh, an avoidance of pain in a very narrow sense but we it is used in a more broader sense uh, which includes emotional experiences and the life satisfaction part of it so hedonic well being is also called as subjective well being i have already told you in the in the last slide that subjective well being is a term uh, that is used uh, specifically to understand uh, the idea of hedonic well being in the psychological literature so it captures the presence of positive affect affect basically means emotions and life satisfaction as well as absence of negative affect so subjective well being or hedonic well being when we conceptualized in the psychological literature uh, we are focusing on uh, both positive and negative emotions affect balance so um, what is your you know uh, frequency of experience of positive emotion as compared to negative emotions and how satisfied are you with your life so subjective well being is also generally in a loosely also used or called as happiness so whenever the word happiness is used in psychology it is kind of loosely used for hedonic well being or subjective well being which which means same thing so happiness is generally defined as an experiential state that contains globally positive affective tone so positive emotion plays very important role in this as well as your uh, evaluation of life in terms of how satisfied are you with your life <coughs> so researchers have conceptualized and measured happiness so psychology is different from the philosophical tradition in the sense that uh, psychologists are more interested into you know actually empirically testing ideas rather than you know doing armchair speculations so when this philosophical discussions of well being you know kind of uh, incorporated into the literature of psychology particularly positive psychology you know psychologists try to measure it and for measuring we need to first need to conceptualize this properly and then we try to find indicators to measure them so research researchers have conceptualized and measured happiness or subjective well being in a uh, various different ways uh, one is obviously they looked at affect balance that is your frequency of your emotions or positive emotions and negative emotions so the idea is higher the positive emotions you know the more uh, subjective well being you will experience so indicating uh, having more pleasant than unpleasant emotional state 
and thus essentially an aggregate of how one feels at different moments. So, this is one important component affect balance po how much uh, positive emotional experiences you uh, you know you experience in your life and the other component that is used to measure subjective well-being or happiness is life satisfaction uh, which goes beyond just momentary feelings of emotions uh, and it is it is more focus it focuses on assessment of your life as a whole uh, how do you evaluate a life are you satisfied with your life or not so subjective well being consists of three components life satisfaction the presence of positive mood or emotions and the lesser or absence of negative mood or emotions together called as happiness or subjective well being so if i just show you here so we have different terms such as you know subjective well being Uh, which is also called as you know kind of happiness so we'll talk about happiness in much more detailed in other in upcoming lecture also which is basically you know hedonic well-being also so is it is it is conceptualized in the psychological literature as absence of positive emo negative emotions here basically does not mean uh, negative emotions will be completely absent obviously that is not possible, but it will be less as compared to let us say positive emotions in terms of you know, experiencing a uh, state of well being. So, your presence of positive emotions should be or frequency of positive emotions will be much higher as compared to negative emotions. So, these are absence does not mean you know complete absence. So, that is simply not possible in the human life. We will all experience negative emotions which has its own place, uh, but too much of negative emotions will lower our uh, you know subjective well being or happiness. And the last one is obviously life satisfaction. Your evaluation of your life. So, these three components are used to measure subjective well being or happiness in uh, the psychological literature and these are important indicators uh, which are measured using standardized uh, tools uh, and questionnaires. Uh, let us a little bit um, more uh, look at eudonomic well being uh, from the psychological literature. So, as we have said that eudonomic well being is called as psychological well being in, uh, in the literature of psychology. Uh, the hedonic approach of well-being has been criticized mostly uh, by many scholars as because big, as incomplete I view of well-being because if you just look at well-being from the emotional perspective or transitory emotions and pleasures of life uh, then it is incomplete simply because you know it is transitory and it cannot define your well-being of your whole life so well-being is more than emotions and just satisfaction of your life so eudonomic well-being addresses this uh, you know uh, deficiency in the conceptualization of well hedonic well being and and uh, and the conceptualize well being in terms of positive functionings in your life how do you functions in life do you pursue uh, no uh, pursue worthwhile goals are you able to actualize your inner potentials and so on so the core of wellness uh, is not pleasant and unpleasant feelings but more about how one functions in response to life challenges that is more important in the context of eudonomic well-being. So, it is um, it is more of a criticism of uh, no, hedonic well-being. So, eudonomic well-being is also called as psychological well-being as I said and um, uh, there have been many you know, uh, ways to people try to conceptualize eudonomic well-being in the psychology, uh, uh, different people try to conceptualize. Uh, one of the most common ways of by which 
eudonomic well-being is conceptualized and measured in psychology is uh, using six dimensions of uh, psychological functioning proposed by Riff and later it is uh, you know by his colleagues uh, by you know so this uh, basically six dimensions of eudonomic well-being uh, these are autonomy environmental mastery personal growth positive relations with others purpose in life self acceptance so these are uh, uh, important dimensions uh, it is one of the most common ways uh, of measuring eudonomic well-being in the psychological literature uh, we will look into uh, define little bit more in the in the upcoming slide about these dimensions. So, eudonomic well being will be discussed in more detail in the later some of the other you know upcoming lectures. We will have specific aspects of hedonic and eudonomic well being in the upcoming lectures. Uh, today we are just introducing the ideas. So, well being is basically as we have seen the better conceptualized as a combination of both hedonic and well uh, eudonomic well being. So, there are many models that try to you know conceptualize well being by combining both hedonic as well as eudynomic ideas. Uh, two such models we will discuss one is uh, keys 13 dimensions of mental health as flourishing and another model is Martin Seligman's model of flourish which is also called as PERMA model P E R M A. Uh, however, you know, this Martin Seligman's model will discuss in the next lecture in the context of well-being and resilience because it is more relevant in that context. Today, we will talk about keys 13 dimensions of mental health as flourishing. So, which combines both hedonic and eudonomic well-being in the conceptualization of well-being and uh, positive mental health. So, keys model of mental health as flourishing. So, according to Corey L. M. Click keys one of the researcher the positive mental health or health includes hedonic well-being and the psychological and societal aspects of eudonomic well-being. So, we need to combine both the aspects. So, therefore, mental health is a combination of emotional, psychological and social well-being. So, they combine both the tradition. Uh, he distinguished uh, the state of flourishing from the state of languishing. So, he said you know human being can experience a flourishing state when a flourishing state is a combination of a uh, high level of subjective well-being and an optimal level of psychological and social functioning. So, when we are experiencing high level of subjective or emotional well-being plus there is an optimal level of psychological functionings or eudonomic well-being, then this life can be called as a flourishing life. On the other hand, if both are low, uh, we call it as a uh, state of languishing where there is subjective well-being is also low, eudonomic well-being is also low. Keys uh, also stated that those who are not in either of this category are considered to be having moderate mental health or moderate condition, neither languishing nor flourishing in their life. So, they are at the moderate level. So, Keys proposed three important factors and 13 dimension out of this uh, three factors as component of mental health or flourishing life. So, these three factors are basically for positive health and well being. One is emotional well being or positive emotions, second is positive psychological functionings or psychological well being, and the third is positive social functioning or social well being. So, these three important components collectively define a flourishing life or a the holistic conceptualization of well-being or positive mental health. So, this includes uh, if I just draw it here. So, flourishing or well-being so it has three broad factors one is emotional well being, which has positive emotions or positive affect.
and life satisfaction these two components are under emotional well being then we have psychological well being it has six dimensions basically taken from the riffs model one is self acceptance personal growth purpose in life environmental mastery autonomy positive relationships so these are six dimensions of psychological well being the third factor is social well being which includes five dimensions social acceptance social actualization social contributions social coherence and social integration so we have total 13 dimensions uh, combining these three broad factors two emotional well being dimensions six psychological dimensions and five social dimensions total 13 dimensions so let us see each of these uh, dimensions uh, or each of these uh, three three factors and their sub dimensions very briefly so the first is uh, positive emotions or um, emotional well being uh, which basically emotional well being consists of positive emotions or effects uh, which uh, basically includes regularly cheerful interested in life uh, good spirits happy calm and peaceful full of life so positive effect includes all these concepts so if you are experiencing positive emotions you are cheerful you are interested in life you have good spirit happy peaceful full of life and thus next is obviously life satisfaction which he used the term avowed quality of life uh, which is mostly um, if you are or mostly or highly satisfied with overall life or domains of life then you you are more life satisfaction is higher so these two are important concepts of positive emotions satisfaction with the life as well as experience of positive emotions so this includes emotional well being then comes psychological well being uh, which is about positive psychological functionings so it has six dimensions so one is called as self acceptance so self ac 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 acceptance basically is about holding positive attitude towards your own self you acknowledge like most part of yourself and personality so you just accept yourself many people are full of self blame they cannot accept themselves so lot of which you no know, lowers their self esteem they are always full of doubts about themselves so that is uh, you know that hinders their personal growth and functionings in life so self acceptance is very important uh, you may have so many issues and uh, problems but you ex first accept yourself in whatever ways so self acceptance is very important uh, to maintain your self esteem as well as uh, you know positive functionings in life next is personal growth uh, is about you know seeking challenge has insights into own potential feels a sense of continued development so people who are working towards personal growth 
uh, they are continually growing in their life uh, they are seeking challenges and growing their skills and abilities and the whatever hidden potentials they have they are actualizing those potentials so if you are working towards that di direction your self growth or personal growth will enhance and enhance your psychological well being or functioning next is purpose in life so purpose in life is about finding directions and meaning in life so that is very important uh, we will have full one lecture on meaning and purpose in life uh, somewhere at the end of this course uh, there we'll discuss a lot about this and then comes environmental mastery it is about exercising ability to select manage and mold personal environments to suit needs so a mastery of environment basically you take proactive steps to you know uh, change situations or do something so that you know uh, you can take things under your control so let's say you have a financial crisis in life or something then you proactively seek a job or seek money uh, in terms of to you know solve the problem of your financial crisis so you try to master your environment in such a way to solve your problems so that is the meaning of uh, you know managing or mastering environment or environmental mastery autonomy is the next uh, dimension which basically is talking about the people who are have a high sense of autonomy they are guided by their own socially accepted internal standards and values so these are the people uh, yes, who are having you know sense of autonomy so they are guided more by their internal values and values need not be chaotic they are socially accepted so you are guided by what you are you are clear about what you want to do in your life so you are guided by those values rather than constantly doing things um, uh, projected by the society or other people you need to do this you need to do that so it is always coming from outside so people with autonomy they are more guided by their internal standards rather than outside pressures or outside goals and values and the last one is positive relations with other uh, is very important and we have discussed a lot about it uh, basically uh, people with positive relations has or can form warm trusting personal relationships so they are able to form relationships positive relationships with other people so these are important dimensions of psychological functionings or psychological well being uh, many of this we'll also talk later then the the third one third uh, dimension was or third category was positive social functionings or social well being under this we have five dimensions one is uh, social acceptance so just like self acceptance uh, people with high social well being has social acceptance so they accept people of of different categories caste and creed so they understand that people are different and they gen naturally they have ex sense of acceptance of people of different diverse categories and caste and creeds and religions so accepting humans as human is more important you know for social well being otherwise a lot of conflicts primarily happens because people don't accept other people so conflict is a natural occurrence of lack of social acceptance so if you social acceptance is very important for individual well being as well as social harmony and then comes social actualization uh, it is about you know uh, believing people groups and society have the potential and can evolve and grow positively so when you believe that collectively as a society we can grow together uh, then it is also very important for social well being you know then you will work towards collective growth or the social welfare uh, people who do lot of work for society or the social welfare they have this idea of collective well being that we all should collectively grow in our life and prosper so that is the meaning of social actualization then comes social contribution so you see own daily activities as useful to and values by society and others so you try to contribute to society in a small small way or big way whatever possibility or potential you have uh, so you try to make us useful to the society beyond just your own life so that is also another important dimension called you know social contribution then comes social coherence is basically the idea that you know uh, you are interested in society and social life and finds them meaningful and somewhat intelligible so when you see a coherence in social life then only you will get interested into social life uh, uh, so coherence and meaningful and there is a logic in the patterns in the structure and the functioning of the society 
and you get interested into society and social life. So that is the meaning of social coherence. And the last one is social integration. So basically, you you integrate yourself to the social functionings. You don't isolate uh, from yourself from the social functionings. So this is basically a sense of belongingness to, and comfort and support from, a community. So, so you have a sense of belongingness to the society. You are contribute actively towards that. You seek support from others. So this makes you feel feel a sense of integration to the society. So these are all important uh, aspects of uh, you know, social well-being, and so uh, proper you know in a holistic sense. If you want to uh, define well-being, so this is Keyes model is one of the important model that integrates all these important dimensions of hedonic well-being, that is emotional uh, well-being, then psychological well-being, uh, which is about you know psychological functionings and social well-being. Uh, which is about social functioning. So, these are all very important uh, dimensions and sub dimensions that we can use to conceptualize and conceptualize and measure uh, well being in a holistic sense. So, with this, I will uh, stop today's lecture. Thank you.